I live in a neighborhood filled with tracked homes. I don't know how many there are over there. Maybe a thousand or two thousand or maybe more. I don't know. I never counted. Don't really have any idea how many there are. It's one of those things that I guess if it were significantly important to me, I would Google it. You could probably Google it and find out how many tracked homes there are in 92508 of Riverside, California. But this is what almost every single one of these homes has. A fireplace. Now I've been running this winter and as of yet I've not smelled a fire in the morning or seen smoke coming out of one of the chimneys. I don't see any coming out of the chimneys in the distance now and it's been cold. I mean it was 30, 32 this morning when I left to run. Cold. In the evenings I've not smelled a fire. It's one of the things in our neighborhood you could always count on. I've not had a fire in my fireplace for probably at least five years, maybe longer. We used to keep a wood pile alongside the house, and about 10 years ago, I was moving some of the wood in the house, and I got bit by a black widow. Cured me of that wood pile. And I don't think we've had it. We had a few of those little waxy logs that you buy at the store, the instant lighters. But other than that, no fires. And yet, every single one of those thousands of homes behind me has a fireplace. Don't know what they're doing with them. I suspect someday archaeologists will come in and survey this area and say, oh, these people were all wood burners. They took care of their homes with fires and they didn't realize that it was basically just this ornamental extension of our past where we used to cook, where we used to gather around as a family, where we used to find our heat, and now it was just like fruit trees in so many front yards, ornamental, not producing anything, just pretty, a mantle over the top of it, and not doing much good. In the neighborhood I grew up in, almost every single house had a piano. I think everybody in one of those houses, somebody played the piano. And even I could play Chopsticks or Heart and Soul or that song that went dun 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 uh, whatever that one, you know, dun 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 Anyway, all of us could do something on the piano because that was an attraction. And if someone came over who played the piano, we might put a fire in the fireplace, put that person at the piano, and boy, doesn't this make us sound like prairie dwellers and the family get together and sing around the fire at the piano, all of us enjoying it. Yeah, I don't think that happens too much anymore. Maybe in your house it does. Let me know. I'd love to hear your comment on it if that's still happening. You can go on Craigslist today and type in free piano and it doesn't matter what your zip code is in the United States, you can get a piano for free. If you want even something else easier, type in free organ. You can get an organ for free. People just don't have pianos anymore. What if someone were to offer you a thousand dollars for 2020 if you were to start taking piano lessons and learn how to play Amazing Grace well by the end of the year? Would you do it? What if you said, yeah, I don't know if I have time. What if they offered you another thousand dollars to say, all you have to do is stay off of social media for one year. Facebook, YouTube, CNN, Fox News, whatever social media you're on, you have to know, oh, I don't know if I could do that. I get the pictures of my kids and my grandkids and I communicate with my friends around the world that way. But I guess I could use my smart TV. And then what if they offered you another thousand dollars to say, okay, and cut the cable and don't watch TV for the, for three thousand dollars, would you do those things? Would you learn how to play the piano? Would you get off of social media would you quit watching television and say, yeah, oh, that's tough. What if they said, you know, for another $7,000, if you'll start having a fire in your fireplace two or three nights a week, no limit, but just a couple times a week for a year, they'd give you $10,000 to get off of social media to learn how to play the piano, to stop watching TV, and have a fire in the fireplace. 
once or twice a week for the next year. You think you would do something like that? Here's the sad truth. I think some of us would say, yeah, I'll do it. And we'd make it through about the first two or three hours, maybe the first two or three days, maybe the first two or three weeks. But really, when I think of my friends, I don't know how many of my friends that I can think of, and my friends are the ones in my age bracket who I think could relate to those times that I grew up in. And when I think of all of those people and all of those homes that all have fireplaces and they look up at snow on the mountains and it's only 30 or 32 degrees this morning and they're not outside, they're not running, they're not enjoying any of this. Do I think they would turn off their phones, turn off their televisions and light a fire in their fireplace for $10,000? Not a chance. Not a chance, even if that were to pay half their mortgage for the year to come. We're an interesting society. The choices we make, the things we do. And I think it's easy to see how we've become not just forward looking, and that explains why we've left pianos, and that explains why we've left fireplaces behind, but very often how we've become just mediocre. We've fallen into a rut and we look like every single other house in the neighborhood. And we act like every single other person in the neighborhood. And we haven't challenged ourselves to be together with other people. We haven't challenged ourselves to learn how to play an instrument so we can share with other people. We haven't challenged ourselves to say, doggone it, I don't need to turn on the heater. Let's put a fire in the fireplace. Let's invite someone over for breakfast this morning. Let's get together. What are you challenging yourself to grow in in 2020? Do you need to shift your focus? And I'm just using these as examples. But you see, it's so easy to fall down into mediocrity that those things that are literally built right into our homes, home after home after home, like a fireplace, thousands of them, end up becoming unused aspects and assets of our wealth. And we're busy dumping our time and other areas that maybe are not nearly as productive as if we were building community together around the fire, someone playing the piano and singing. Sounds kind of old timey, doesn't it? Um, not to be old timey, but instead just to say, there's a miracle that's waiting for you. And maybe you feel like you're living a miraculous life. Go get them, keep on doing whatever it is you're doing. But if you're stuck in a life of mediocrity, it's not what you were created for. You were created for a life that's absolutely miraculous. And I want to invite you in the year to come to be the miracle and to make the changes. Because it's up to you. Without the decision to make the changes, it's never going to happen. All I can't make the changes for anybody else in my neighborhood. I can make the changes for me. You can't make the changes for anybody else in your family. You can make the changes for you. And this is what I've discovered about those people who are transformative in society. Everyone is drawn to them, just like a fire, just like when someone's playing the piano. Everyone is drawn to them, and they can't wait to be in that circle of embrace and enjoy it because I feel like it's a little bit miraculous. Hey, let's go today. Let's be the miracle. Get on Craigslist. Get yourself a piano. Put a fire in the fireplace. Turn me off. Turn off that phone and go be with someone today. It's Saturday. Celebrate it. Enjoy it. I'm going to Central Community. Get ready to preach tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.